Next, let's talk about aquifer and spring ecosystems. Most aquifers don't support aquatic ecosystems as we normally think about them. There's no light underground, so no photosynthesis by plants can occur. There may be no dissolved oxygen. Now, there are some organisms that can live in such dark, nutrient-poor, anaerobic conditions. Microorganisms, primarily bacteria, protozoans, and other unicellular life, are found in aquifers. Some kinds of bacteria in groundwater are actually useful to humans. An example is denitrifying bacteria, and these remove nitrates. Excess nitrates are a water pollutant that may seep into the aquifer, particularly in agricultural regions where fertilizers or manure containing nitrates are spread on soils to enhance growth of food crops. Now, there is one kind of aquifer that can support a more complex underground aquatic ecosystem, although life here is very different than what we see in lakes, rivers, or in the ocean. These are the karst aquifers, karst aquifer caves and underground lakes and rivers. Now these can support entire ecosystems that include invertebrates, fish, and amphibians, all deep under the ground. But these species are unlike anything we're used to seeing above ground. The aquifer has no sunlight and therefore no green plants or algae with chlorophyll that take the sun's energy and convert it to food. Without these primary producers, the aquatic ecosystems underground don't have a lot of nutrients or foods available. Available food is constantly recycled among the organisms that are there with only occasional additions of food from the outside. These underground ecosystems have a very low carrying capacity as a result. They can only support a few individuals of any one species, and these individuals usually don't grow to be very large at all. This lack of sunlight has another consequence. In fact, the single most amazing adaptation of invertebrates, fish, and amphibians to the dark underground aquatic ecosystem is an absence of eyes. Here we see the Texas blind salamander. It's adapted for living in these water-filled caves of the Edwards aquifer. It has no eyes. It does have two small black dots under the skin where, their eyes, where eyes would normally be, yet the blind salamander is an active predator. It hunts food by sensing water pressure waves that are created by prey in the underground waters where it lives. Now, there are no waves or great currents there, so even the slightest movement of water can be detected by these little predators. Tiny snails, shrimp, and other aquatic invertebrates make up its diet. It also has very little skin pigment. Its color is white and in some places clear. The skin is, is just clear right through. And it has red external gills that are used to get dissolved oxygen from the water. It's unknown how many Texas blind salamanders really exist. In these deep underground waters, Predators have adapted ways to find and catch prey in the dark. And prey have adapted ways to escape. Sensory adaptations such as antenna, chemoreceptors, and touch receptors are highly developed in these underground dwelling species. These species also have a very low metabolism, allowing them to live on very little food. This adaptation is aided by the constant temperatures of aquifer waters. Now, this is compared to surface water temperatures, which can vary very quickly and widely. Groundwater species live in a very stable and predictable environment. As with aquatic ecosystems above ground, though, there can be overlaps with other ecosystems, and this means that species in the aquifer may not be completely isolated from life on the surface. Now the land surface above the karst aquifer is an integral part of the habitat of animals that inhabit the underground areas. Holes in the limestone and marble of these aquifers often extend to the surface. Well, near Wimberley is a good example. Here, there's a large opening in the stream bed 
of Cypress Creek. This opening is actually a water-filled cave that extends deep down into the aquifer. There are also caves open to the surface that lead to the aquifer in many other locations. Because plants can't grow in darkness, the cave and associated underwater ecosystem is dependent on plant and animal materials being washed into the cave from the outside. Food in the cave can also come from organisms such as bats, mice, and crickets that take shelter in caves. They can become food or, or prey for cave dwellers, or they can also leave food behind. For example, bat and mouse feces dropped on a cave floor provides nutrients that fungi need to grow. Fungi are eaten by several species of insects that may wander in and out of the cave. These insects produce very rapidly, they move about the cave, and they become prey for predatory invertebrates that live their entire lives in the cave. These invertebrates fall into the water and can be swept deep into the aquifer where they can be eaten by species such as the Texas blind salamander. Now the salamander itself can be eaten by other species such as the toothless blind cat. This is a catfish that can live over 1,000 feet below the Earth's surface. The aquifer ecosystem extends beyond the aquifer itself where it emerges into a spring. Here, the groundwater mixes with surface water in the spring, stream, rivers, and lake waters downstream. However, it is in the springs themselves that are formed by the aquifer's emerging waters where the unique underground ecosystem truly extends to the surface. We occasionally get a rare glimpse of life in these underground ecosystems when an invertebrate fish or salamander from the Edwards Aquifer, for example, gets swept out into a spring. You may see one of these odd creatures or, or one of the predators that like to eat them when you tour the San Marcos Springs in a glass bottom boat. While many aquifers don't contain aquatic life, most major springs in Texas do. Some even contain species found nowhere else. The Edwards Aquifer ecosystem and its springs contain over 60 species of plants and animals that live nowhere else in the world. Species of salamanders, fish, amphipods, beetles, spiders, and others have evolved in these isolated habitats within the aquifer and springs. Many of these live in the dry caves above the water table and others live in the many springs fed by the aquifer. Barton Springs, located in Austin, is the only place where the Barton Springs and Austin blind salamanders live. Fountain darters live only in the San Marcos and Comal rivers. Texas wild rice lives only in the San Marcos Springs and river immediately downstream of the springs. And here's a picture of that wild rice. Because springs are exposed to sunlight, aquatic plants play a role in providing nutrients. A relatively constant temperature, at least near spring openings, allows species to adapt to a highly specialized <coughs> lifestyle. These species often can't exist very far from the spring, including in the stream and river that the spring creates. Water temperatures, in particular, may limit a species adapted to a spring ecosystem from wandering beyond the vicinity of the spring itself. Cool spring waters may quickly warm when exposed to Texas's hot weather. As a result, spring ecosystems tend to be small, allowing only relatively small populations of any one species to survive. As with species adapted for life completely underground, species and spring ecosystems may be greatly affected by even small changes to their habitat. For species in a spring, lower <laughs> spring flow due to drought or by groundwater withdrawals may reduce habitat and create significant stress to the organisms there. Invasive species 
may quickly overwhelm and outcompete native spring species. Many of Texas's stream ecosystems have been impacted by both flow reductions and invasive species. Humans have also made changes to springs. In fact, they've made the most changes to springs. Many of Texas's largest springs have even been turned into swimming pools by placing a dam across water flowing from where the spring originates. These include Barton Springs Pool in Austin and the largest spring-fed swimming pool in the world pictured here located at Balamorea State Park in West Texas. At such places, the native spring ecosystems may no longer exist. 